Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem in 8 from IMO 2022. I thought in this video I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about quadratic residues, Euler's criterion, quadratic reciprocity, extended Legendre symbol which is called Jacobi symbol and uh, then we'll uh, use those to solve this problem. So here's the problem and this is a difficult problem but there's a slick way of doing this problem using the concepts that I talked about. So problem is show that 5 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n is not divisible by 2 to the power of n plus 65 for any positive integer n. Okay so here's what we're gonna do. First we're gonna talk about quadratic residues and along the way I'll do some examples. We say an integer a is a quadratic residue mod n if and only if there is an integer x for which x squared is a mod n. So for example, if you look at mod 5, quadratic residues are 0, 0 squared is 0, 1 which comes from plus minus 1 squared and plus minus 2 squared is going to be 4. So these are quadratic residues mod 5. Quadratic non-residues would be the rest of them. So if you look at 2 and 3 or um, plus minus 2, those two are not quadratic residues. Now, it's very convenient to use a symbol for quadratic residues and quadratic non-residues and that is called the Legendre symbol. So the symbol is n over p. If p is a prime, we define n over p to be 0 if p divides n, negative 1 if n is a quadratic non-residue mod p, 1 if n is a quadratic residue mod p and p does not divide n. So if I want to summarize what we had here, we could say 1 over 5, the Legendre symbol of that, and 4 over 5, those two are 1 because 1 and 4 are quadratic residues. 0 over 5 is 0 and 2 over 5 and 3 over 5, the Legendre symbol are negative one. We make an exception for zero even though it is a quadratic residue we denote that by zero. Okay so how would that help? One of the reasons that this would help is that it satisfies the multiplicativity. What does that mean? And that is summarized in Euler's criterion. For every odd prime p and an integer a we have a over p is a to the power of p minus 1 over 2 mod p. Consequently, if p does not divide a and b, then we have a b over p is the product of a over p and b over p. And the reason is if you look at a b to the power of p minus 1 over 2, that is a to the power of p minus 1 over 2 times b to the power of p minus 1 over 2. So the left hand side is going to be a b over p and the right hand side is going to be a over p times b over p and of course everything is mod p but notice that these numbers are plus or minus one so the only way plus minus one could be congruent to plus minus one mod p is for them to be exactly equal now one of the tools that is going to help us solve problems like the one that we stated at the beginning is the quadratic reciprocity and the quadratic reciprocity which the proof is not very easy states that if you have two distinct odd primes there is a relation between p over q and q over p and the re relation is this a, a p over q is negative 1 to the power of p minus 1 over 2 times q minus 1 over 2 times q over p Furthermore, it also states how to evaluate 2 over p. 2 over p is negative 1 to the power of p squared minus 1 over 8 and negative 1 over p is negative 1 to the power of p minus 1 over 2. If we take this along with the Euler's criterion, we can basically evaluate all um, Legendre symbols. Now, one note of caution is that this part a lot of the times is not stated as part of the quadratic reciprocity as well as this part is not stated as part of the Euler's criterion. But I do combine these in one theorem and the reason is it just helps us remember these better because really all we need to do to evaluate these Legendre symbol are these two theorem. So if you see at a place that they don't include these highlighted parts, part of Euler's criterion or quadratic reciprocity, don't be surprised. It's just more convenient to consider them as part of the same thing. 
Okay, so now let me do an example on this. Let's say I want to figure out whether 120 is a quadratic residue mod 101. Notice that 101 is a prime. So what we need to do is to figure out 120 over 101. First thing I do is that since I'm working mod 101, I can reduce the numerator into 19 because 19 and 120 are the same mod 101. Now I'm going to use the quadratic reciprocity. So this is going to be negative 1 to the power of 19 minus 1 over 2 times 101 over 2 minus 1 over 2 times 101 over 19. Now 19 minus 1 is 18 divided by 2 that's 9 so that's odd but this guy is going to be 50 so that just becomes 1. So I can rewrite that as 101 over 19. Now if you divide 101 by 19, you get a remainder of 6. So we get 6 over 19, because 19 times 5 becomes 95, and then we're left with 6. Now we are going to use the fact that this is multiplicative. So I can rewrite that as 2 over 19 times 3 over 19. Now I have a formula for 2 over 19, that's negative 1 to the power of 19 squared minus 1 over 8, and 3 over 19, I can use quadratic reciprocity. So that would be negative 1 to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 times 19 minus 1 over 2, and then 19 over 3. 19 squared minus 1 over 8 would be 19 minus 1 is 18. 19 plus 1 is 20. This one is 1, and this one is 9. So that becomes odd, so that's just a negative 1. And 19 over 3, I can reduce that to 1 over 3. And of course, 1 is a quadratic residue, so that would be 1. Now if I simplify this one, this becomes 9, this becomes 5, and this goes away. So we get negative 1 times negative 1 times 1, which is 1. So this means 120 is a quadratic residue mod 101. So that solves this problem. So the benefit of this quadratic residue, quadratic reciprocity, is that we can use that to basically evaluate all uh, Legendre symbols. One disadvantage is that anytime you're using quadratic reciprocity, you will have to factor the numerator. For example, here we have 6, so we have to factor it into 2 times 3. Of course, for small numbers, that's pretty straightforward. But for large numbers, factorization is extremely difficult. And in fact, impossible if you are dealing with integers uh, with uh, millions of digits. So, what we need to do is to come up with a way that, um, that eliminates the necessity of us factoring the numerator and the way we're going to do that is what we call the Jacobi symbol or Jacobi symbol. So let's talk about that now. Given two relatively prime integers a and b with b greater than 1, we define the Jacobi symbol a over b as this product. So what we do is we factor the denominator so to speak and then we write it down as a over b as a over p1 times a over p2 all the way to a over pk where b is the product of b1 through bk so now you might ask okay doesn't that require us to factor the denominator and the answer is yes but in a few minutes i will tell you why that's actually not necessary before i get to that one word of caution about this jacobi symbol the Jacobi symbol doesn't really mean the same thing as the Legendre symbol. So, for example, if you look at 2 over 15, by definition this is 2 over 3 times 2 over 5. 2 is not a quadratic residue mod 5 and is also not a quadratic residue mod 3. So this is 1. But 2 is in fact not a quadratic residue mod 15. So if uh, if the Jacobi symbol is 1, that does not tell us that the numerator is a quadratic residue. However, if a over b is negative 1, then one of the a over pj's must be negative 1. Which means a is a quadratic non-residue mod 
pj which also means a is a quadratic non-residue mod b so if the jacobi symbol is negative one it does mean that a is not a quadratic residue mod b but if the jacobi symbol is one it does not mean that a is a quadratic residue mod b it could be a product of a bunch of negative ones and a bunch of ones okay so let's now talk about some of the properties and then we'll see how that would help us in evaluation of the Jacobi symbol and uh, Legendre symbol, in fact, and then we'll do the IMO problem. Suppose A, B, C are integers with GCD of A and C and GCD of B and C are 1. If C is more than 1, then AB over C is the same as A over C times B over C. So that's the exact same property that we had for the Legendre symbol. We do have the exact same property for the Jacobi symbol as well. If A and B are the same mod C, then A over C and B over C are the same. We need the denominator to be more than one because that's how the Jacobi symbol was defined. If A and B are more than one, then C over AB is the same as C over A times C over B. All of these follow pretty much from the definition and the pro properties of the Legendre symbol. So these are pretty straightforward. Last thing I'm going to talk about before I get to the uh, IMO problem is the extended quadratic reciprocity. Again, this is a word that I use, extended quadratic reciprocity. In fact, I haven't seen it anywhere else that people use extended quadratic reciprocity, but I do want to use it because it's not quite the same as the quadratic reciprocity that we discussed at the beginning. This is a uh, different although it is pretty useful and the way this works is that is exactly the same way so if you take two odd numbers they don't have to be primes in this case a over b is negative one to the power of a minus one over two times b minus one over two times b over a so the exact same property and furthermore 2 over a is the same formula, has the exact same formula. It's negative 1 to the power of a squared minus 1 over 8. And negative 1 over a is negative 1 to the power of a minus 1 over 2. So now I'm going to show you how we can use this to solve the IMO problem. Okay, so prove that 5 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n is not divisible by 2 to the power of n plus 65. So the first thing is let's just use proof by contradiction. So assume that it is the case that 2 to the power of n plus 65 divides 5 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n. So one thing that was pretty easy to notice is that if you look at 2 to the power of n plus 65 and take that mod 3, we get negative 1 to the power of n and then plus negative 1. 66 is 0 mod 3, so 65 is negative 1. This is basically 0 if 2 divides n, but 3 clearly doesn't divide 5 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n. So what does that mean? That means n is odd. Because if n is even, 3 divides this guy, but 3 does not divide this guy. So 3, n, n, n must be odd. Now, what we know is that 5 to the power of n is congruent to 3 to the power of n mod 2 to the power of n plus 65. So what does that mean? It means if I use the Jacobi symbol, I know 5 over 2 to the power of n plus 65, raised to the power of n here, is the same as 3 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 65. And this is using the properties of the Jacobi symbol. Now, let's see what happens to both sides. First of all, we can write down 5 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 65 as... 5 over 2 to the power of n plus 65 to the power of n. So now we're going to evaluate 5 over 2 to the power of n plus 65 using the quadratic reciprocity or rather the extended quadratic reciprocity. This is negative 1 to the power of 5 minus 1 over 2 times 2 to the power of n plus 65 minus 1 over 2 2 to the power of n plus 65 over 5. Now, 5 minus 1 over 2 is 2, so the negative 1 to squared is 1, so we can ignore that part. 65 is 0. This is 0 mod 5, so I can get rid of that portion. So that gives me 2 to the power of n over 5. 
this would be 2 over 5 to the power of n by multiplicativity. I know 2 is a quadratic non-residue, so this would be negative 1 to the power of n. I know n is odd, so this would be negative 1. So this means 5 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 65 is going to be negative 1 to the power of n, but n is odd, so that's negative 1. Now let's look at the other one. Let's look at 3 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 65. By multiplicativity, I can just write it down as 3 over 2 to the power of n plus 65 to the power of n. Now let's evaluate 3 over 2 to the power of n plus 65 using quadratic reciprocity or rather the extended quadratic reciprocity. This is 3 minus 1 over 2, 2 to the power of n plus 65 minus 1 over 2 times 2 to the power of n plus 65 over 3. Now, if you evaluate this one, this is going to be just 1. This would be 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 64 divided by 2, which is 32. So if n is at least 2, this would be just 1. So this would be 2 to the power of n plus 65 over 3 if n is at least 2. So we can just check n equals 1 separately. But that's pretty straightforward. Now, 2 to the power of n is negative 1 to the power of n. 65 is negative 1 over 3. n is odd, so this would be negative 2 over 3, which is 1. So this would be 1. So that means 3 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 65 is 1. So we get this one is 1. But we found that, that the other one is negative 1. So that's different from 5 to the power of n over to the power of n plus 65, which is negative 1. And this means the two are not the same, which means the initial assumption that we made is in fact false. This basically solves the problem. Usually the way I had seen Jacobi symbol to be used is in computational number theory. In fact, I had never seen that being used in a math competition problem. So I thought it would be good to take advantage of this video and talk about the Jacobi symbol and how this clever use of Jacobi symbol can solve this pretty difficult IMO problem. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel and I will see you in the next video.